Blender 3.2 introduced a few new tools to its scope mode, with the main one being the paint brush tool. It basically lets you paint your model without having to do anything else beforehand. In this video, you're going to learn how all these new tools work, including the basic settings. I'm also going to give you my general workflow that I use to paint my models this way. And I'm also going to give you the pros and cons so that you know whether or not you want to use the system on your own models. I also included a challenge where I wanted to recreate this image in different time spans. And you can guess how long the last version took. I'm gonna reveal how long it actually took at the end of the video. Hello, 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 hello. I'm Nogi, and let's first answer the question how these new tools actually work. Broadly speaking, it's basically just vertex painting, but with a few new functionalities and of course in scope mode. The object data properties keeping these colors are also being renamed. Now they're called color attributes. Vertex painting basically enables you to apply a color to each individual vertice or point on your model. And the distance or the area in between these colors is basically the gradient between these colors if they're right next to each other. This means you can apply colors to your model without having to UV unwrap or somehow prepare your model for textures. Of course, if you want to add a lot of detail, you would have to have more resolution in your geometry. It runs faster in scope mode. You have different brushes that you don't have in vertex painting. And it also enables you to create concepts faster because you're already in scope mode. You don't have to switch to vertex painting. To make them visible in the render, you have to go and create a shader. And then you need to add a node, which is under the input and is called color attribute. Once you add that, you need to select the color attribute layer. And then you can plug it into any shader and it will use the color that you've applied for the color of the shader. If you want to see the colors in the 3D viewport, you can go up to viewport shading and then you can switch the color to attribute. Another cool feature that they've added is you can still remesh your model without losing the colors. The setting you have to enable for that though is the preserve color attributes tick box. Remeshing works, but dynamic topology still deletes your colors. There's no setting to preserve them. You might be wondering whether or not you can use modifiers with the system. Currently not, they plan on adding that feature in the future, but I'm going to give you a workaround for that at the end of the video where we kind of go over a few workarounds that solve a few problems that the system has. Let's talk about all the new tools that have been added. The first one, of course, being the main one, the paint brush. Of course, in the beginning, you have stuff like radius, strength, normal radius and hardness. And then, of course, you have the primary and secondary color. You can paint with the primary color by just, you know, painting. If you want to paint with the secondary color, you can either switch, of course, or you can just hold control and then you paint with the secondary color. If you want to sample, basically, or pick a color that is already painted on the surface, you can just hold your cursor over the color that you want to sample and then you can press S. And then we have the blend mode. I'm not going to go in depth with what all of these do, but they're quite useful, especially when you refine the painting. Afterwards, we have the flow. It's similar to the accumulate function for brushes. So for example, if it's not set to one, if you brush over the same spot multiple times, it accumulates more and more paint in that area. Wet mix basically means that it takes the primary color and then mixes that with the color on the surface of the object. Wet persistence basically defines how long the color on the surface stays mixed with the primary color of your brush. So the longer you drag your brush out, the wet persistence determines how long the colors stay mixed. The wet paint radius basically determines how much of the cursor is being used to sample the color underneath the cursor to mix it into the primary color of your brush. The density basically lets you create this airbrush effect where you basically throw or spray these color particles onto the surface. It creates this interesting texture. The tip roundness basically determines how round your brush is. So you can go from a circle to a cube and everything in between. And the tip scale X scales the cursor on the X axis. I think what it does is if you have two pieces that are close together, you don't paint on both at the same time. Although that didn't really work that well for me. Underneath all these settings, of course, you also have the color picker where you can pick your colors with the spectrum. And then underneath that, you have the color palette. The color palette basically lets you save your primary color. And if you want to switch between them, you can just select the one that you want to paint with. The next new tool is the smudge tool. I think it's quite self-explanatory. The settings you have here are basically just the deformation. You can either drag the colors, you can pinch the colors together, or you can expand them. After that, we also have the mask by color tool, which basically lets you select a certain color and the threshold determines how much the color can differ and still be included in the selection. 
the contiguous or contiguous tick box lets you basically select only the color that is connected. So if you have two pieces or two blobs that have the same color, you will only select the one that you click on. The other one will be unselected. The invert box basically inverts the masking. So everything you select will be unmasked and everything around it will be masked. And the preserve previous mask tick box basically lets you add or remove from the current mask. The color filter tool is similar to the cloth filter or mesh filter tool where it lets you apply a color change to the colors that are either unmasked or if nothing's unmasked of course it applies it to everything. And if you want to apply the filter you hover over the surface, hold left click and then drag to the left or to the right. And of course you can also change the strength so you can be more exact with your cursor movement. Once I finish the sculpt I need to prepare the model so I can actually paint it with as much detail as I wanted to. So I need to remesh the model with a very very low value. The way I like to create my vertex paintings is to start with the general block out of the colors. So I choose the colors that I want for my primary and secondary color and then I go into the sculpt I already have a a base color applied which you apply once you add the color attribute layer and then I basically just paint over it and basically create the general block out of the main colors that exist in the image or that I want to have in the image. I just use the full strength and try to make it as visible as possible. Fine tuning is not the main goal that we have right now. The main goal is just to block everything out. And as you can see here, the fragmented version ends with basically the block out done. Once I have the main colors in place, I like to begin adding a few secondary colors I like to call it. So for this example, here for example the red which isn't used that much but in a few select places so that's what I would call a secondary color. I'm still blocking out the colors because we're still kind of laying out all the different colors that will be part of the image. You can use the masking for example to make it easier to still keep the color separate but also add new colors to the surface. So on top of the red color I also add these multiple orange colors just to kind of you know block out a gradient to already kind of merge the colors together. In this stage it's still not about making it look like the reference it is more about still kind of um, nailing the colors rather than nailing the look of the image I guess. Once all the colors are in place we can get to smoothing that's basically where all the colors are being merged and it'll look actually like skin. Of course, if you want to, you can also use the filter tool and smooth all the colors at once. But I like to use the smudge brush just because I have more control and I can kind of fine tune all the different areas of the sculpt. It's not going to look exactly like the reference, of course. So you kind of have to get over the fact that you might think, oh, no, it's not going to look like the final image at the end. You can have to trust the process in this workflow. Another good workflow that you can use, which I use in the last version, is to immediately start with a very, very smooth brush, basically reducing the hardness all the way down to one, enabling the strength pressure sensitivity. So I can sort of gradually add more of the color that I have in my primary color, and I can gradually increase my color intensity as I go. Also make sure that you don't forget the blend modes. There are quite a lot of blend modes that are even useful in the beginning stages. So for example, increasing the saturation, maybe even changing the hue, changing the value. All of these can be very useful. For example, if you're having trouble selecting the exact color that you want to have, you can also just use the saturation blend mode, for example, and increase the saturation of the color that you want to change until you reach the point where you're happy. Unfortunately, I couldn't really find a good way to use the wet attribute of the brush. I guess that is more for more painterly paintings, I guess. Also, if you want to make your strokes look a little bit more like a brush stroke, I would suggest decreasing the tip roundness so that it's more blocky. And then you should probably also increase the hardness a little bit. But even though I'm now merging the colors together, I'm still only working with the block out. I'm not adding details until I think the block out looks right. The main colors look right. Because if you add details too early, you might have to remove them again because you see that the underlying color doesn't look right. The details should always come last. It's similar to sculpting, basically. If you have multiple pieces for your model you can of course switch between the two so for this example for example I had the head as a separate model than the hair which makes it of course easier to sculpt where the two models kind of intersect and you can switch between the two by pressing alt q so I'm basically slowly but surely decreasing the size of my brush until I reach the smallest details like for example in the lips these cracks and even these skin details that make it look way way better in the end. And if you do a piece like mine where you also want to paint the shadows and lights and highlights and all that, for the model not to be affected by any shadows or lights, you have to make sure that you plug the color attribute node into the emission node so that it emits light itself and it doesn't create any shadows anywhere. So why would you use the system? Well, first of all, it's fast and easy. 
So once you finish your sculpt, you can immediately add colors to it without having to do anything else, which makes it perfect for quick concepting that doesn't really need to be perfectly executed just to kind of get a visual representation of what you had in mind, for example. Because you save the colors in the vertices, you, do, you also don't need to UV map your model. And of course, what also that includes is you don't need to retopologize the model. So if you don't like, you know, UV unmapping or retopology, like me, for example, then maybe vertex painting might be something you could consider. The problems with the systems are that first of all it requires a lot of geometry if you want to add a lot of detail to the model which means that if you don't have a good system then that's probably not going to be possible for you it also doesn't have layers layers that you work sort of non-destructively which isn't possible in this system it also doesn't have the modifier support, so things like the multi-resolution modifier doesn't work, at least currently, maybe they'll change that in the future. And it's also quite useless, of course, for low poly models, because it requires a lot of geometry to add more detail. So if you want to add more detail to your low poly models, you should probably stick to texture painting. But there are some workarounds that we can use to kind of alleviate the problems that we have with the system. First of all, the lacking modifier support. If you want to use the multi-resolution modifier, you can of course co not combine that with the vertex paint mode. What you can do though is you can UV unwrap the model, then you duplicate the multi-resolution model. On the duplicate, you apply the multi-resolution on its highest level. Then you do the vertex painting on that version. Once the paint job is done, you go into the shading menu and you create a shader. That shader will use a color attribute, plug that into the emission node and then into the material output. And then you also create an image texture node. There you will just create a new image texture. And then we go to the bake settings in the render properties. Change the bake type to emit and then hit bake. Make sure that you select the image texture node though. Once the bake is done, you can replace the color attribute node with the image texture node and both cubes will have the same paint job. Of course, if you want to change anything on the paint job again, you would have to redo the whole process, but that would be one workaround that you can use to still work with modifiers and also combine that with the vertex painting. And that also solves the problem with low poly models. For example, if you have a high poly model and then you turn it into a low poly model, you can use the high poly model, do the vertex painting there, UV unwrap both of them the exact same way, and then you can apply the baked texture that you've created, apply it to the low poly model, and the low poly model will have the detailed vertex painting that you had on the high poly model. When it comes to layers though, there isn't a perfect recreation or a perfect workaround. What you can do is you can use multiple color attribute layers and then go into shading and kind of sort of combine them with, for example, the mix RGB node. It doesn't work that well, so I didn't use it for my piece, for example, um, but if you want to use it, then, you know, that's one way how you can fake a layer system. If you're interested in more Blender sculpting mode deep dives, make sure to check out one of these two videos. Thank you for watching. Maybe I'll see you next time. Until then, see ya.